I'm one of your fellow world's toughest mutters. I'm going to try to uh, dispel quickly, as quickly as I can, over a recorded message. Uh, I figured I'd do it this way rather than trying to type all of this because it's going to take a bit. Um, the understanding of thermal regulation. Thermal, thermal regulation outside of the water, basically you need a, a layer of warm air between you and the outside. That's why you wear those thick layers of clothing. Layering your clothing, putting multiple layers on, putting an under armor and then a sweater and then a coat, it increases the number of layers, which in, therefore increases the air barrier between you and the outside. Air is, temperature is changed fairly easily. Um, due to environments, whether it be the outside environment or your inside environments. Your body can warm up the air fairly quickly inside your clothes, but the air outside your clothes is obviously very cold. The colder the air outside your clothes is, and the more you're moving around, the more that air is going to disperse out of your clothing. Now, if you're moving around, you're exercising like we will be, you're warming up that air constantly on the inside. So that air provides a good barrier. The problem is that when you get in the water, your clothes get wet and they suck the heat right out of your body. Um, that's a good thing if it's hot outside. It's a bad thing if it's cold outside. You don't want the you don't want that cold water sucking the heat right out of your body. That's where the wetsuits come in. Wetsuits provide a barrier using water rather than air. Um, basically, with the hot with the with the cold air or cold water outside your wetsuit and your wetsuit allowing a little bit of water inside your wetsuit, your body's norm, normal body heat will warm the water that's inside the suit. Uh, depending on the thickness and the, and the uh, tightness of your suit is how much water is let in, how much of the outside water is affecting your inside area. But for the most part, you wanna think about outside your wetsuit is the outside environment, inside the wetsuit is your inside environment, even though it's not inside your body. So if you have a, a three mil wetsuit, you only have a three millimeter barrier between you and the outside. That lat matters a little bit less unless you're constantly in the water. So when you guys talk about your three mils versus your five mils, the really the question there is how much water are we in at that point? Um, so if you're participating in 2013, it's gonna be very different than 2012, 2011 in that we're not in the water as much. If we're not in the water as much, the thickness of the wetsuit doesn't matter as much. Where that comes into play is, how now now what comes into play is how tight your wetsuit is, how long you're gonna keep that water inside the suit to keep you warmed up. And that's where the world stuff is mutters different from a traditional water type environment. When you're in the water, the water stays inside the suit. It may flush in and out, but there's water in the suit. My experience was last year that it takes about 15 minutes for all of that water to run out of the suit. And once it's out, now all you have is that neoprene barrier between you and the outside. Even if you're wearing a, you know, a five mil suit or eight mil suit, um, that barrier against 30 degrees in the outside is not really gonna help because again, you, the only way to keep yourself warm in the air is an air barrier. Well, you're not have, you don't have an air barrier when all you have is a three mil, or a, a five mil and eight mil wetsuit and that's not gonna keep you very warm. The idea was last year was to get you back in the water as soon as possible to get that water back in there and warm you back up, okay? So that being said, this year um, with being out of the water more often and being in the water less often, I am thinking that less, uh, less it, it matters less the thickness of your suit and more can you provide a water and air barrier at the same time. This would mean a wetsuit of some sort with clothes over the top of it. This is during the coldest environments. The one thing about a wetsuit that you gotta understand, most wetsuits that I know of are black. Wetsuits are really effective at absorbing heat from the outside. Meaning if it's sunny day, the wetsuit will absorb the heat from the outside. The way your body cools normally is that it allows perspiration and evaporation to occur. Inside a wetsuit, that does not occur. There is no uh, evaporation uh, going to occur because of the thick, because the wetsuit is provi prevents water from leaving, okay? You're also covered entirely with a wetsuit, which provides no, uh, what's called convection, the air blowing against your skin. That's what the fan blowing against your skin. So there's none of that. So there's no air circulation inside that suit really. So how do you cool? Well, one way you cool is if there's cold air blowing against the outside of the suit, the suit radiates the heat from the inside of your body out to the outside because it's very thin. If there is heat against the outside of the suit, meaning the sun is beating down on the suit, there's not gonna be any radiation of heat either. 
So if you've noticed, if you've ever wore a suit outside of the water and you just start roasting because you're sitting in the sun, even if it's not that warm a temperature outside, that's the reason. The suit is absorbing the heat from the outside, the sun, and not absorbing the heat from you and then transferring it out to the outside environment. So that's one thing you got to uh, take into account. Is it a sunny day? Is it really windy? How often are you going to be in the water? All these things affect it. Obviously, the worst type of environment, I'm going to give you this, the worst type of environment to be in a wetsuit would be exercising, building up internal heat in the sun where it was warmer day and not have a whole lot of wind because all of those would prevent you from losing any kind of heat whatsoever in a wetsuit. Uh, the worst type of environment for a wetsuit would be a windy day when you're in and out of the water, but you're out of the water more frequently than you're in the water, meaning the water is running out of the suit and it's providing no protection against the outside environment. Okay, so those are the two extremes. Uh, a warm sunny day, which it looks like as of Monday, November 11th, it's going to be on Saturday. A warm sunny environment uh, without a whole lot of wind is a bad environment for a wetsuit. In the evening time or in the nighttime runs, 40 degrees, wetsuit's probably necessary, although the thickness of the wetsuit may not be that necessary because of the amount of time we spend in the water. At that point, you may want to think about outside clothing, regular clothing. It will provide an air barrier for your wetsuit against the outside air, and your wetsuit will provide that water barrier for the time that you are in the water. The one thing that the world's toughest mudder will provide, whether or not there's a lot of water or not a lot of water, is cold mud. Remember when I talked about the radiating of heat out of the wetsuit? Cold mud will suck the heat right out of your wetsuit, which means if this wetsuit is sucking it out of your body in the nighttime, even if you're not in quote-unquote water, if all you're wearing is a wetsuit, the heat is going to be sucked right out of you just as if you were in the water and you're in another bad environment. So my, my recommendation, knowing what I know about thermal regulation, is nighttime, wetsuit, layer of clothes over the top of the wetsuit. Daytime, wetsuit optional. You wanna take it, fine, don't take it, whatever you want. My, my own opinion is it takes too long to put a wetsuit on, but you're gonna have to deal with the heat of the outside, air, outside sun hitting that wetsuit. So the question is, how do you wanna handle that? But that's the understanding of, of thermal regulation as far as it's concerned with wetsuits and the world's toughest mudder. Hope it helps and uh, look forward to seeing some posts on the topic.